Did we want to quickly run through Under Siege tomorrow? We will be live for that, and I will remind everybody watching right now, we are back for SmackDown and Under Siege tomorrow. It's going to be a fun one. Saturday, we will be live for Backlash, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So wake, bake, do what you do. Get your cereal, get your toast, get your bacon, and uh, get to the channel. It's going to be a fun one on Saturday. And then we're back all the time. We got more content coming your way. We got more um, more uh, live streams, more pay-per-views. So make sure you be a friend, tell a friend. We are growing by the minute. Anybody you know that likes wrestling, send them our link. Let them know who we are. But yeah, we got TNA Under Siege tomorrow. Do we want to be a good show? Um, I think it is. I, I'm going to be honest. This might be the first time I'm not super excited for uh, a TNA event. I struggle with the back-to-back pay-per-views a little bit. I struggle with, like, we just had Rebellion. Two weeks later, we're having Under Siege. I think it's going to deliver, like, all the other pay-per-views, but I'm just not super excited about it because I feel like I'm still in that Rebellion kind of headspace. I feel like this one really, really, really went under the radar. And maybe mm-hmm. because it was, like, I feel like this is the third pay-per-view in, like, nine weeks, ten weeks. Like yeah. two Friday shows and Rebellion in the middle, I, I'm not. I wish they would spread them out a little more. And I think I think the struggle with it is because it's not live. So when you and I'm not talking about Under Siege, I'm talking about their weekly shows because when you record them around a pay per view, it's kind of difficult to schedule the next pay per view. Um, and I feel like yeah. because we're like right now we got under siege, but we'll have, I think, against all odds, like the middle of June. And I'm like, so we're going almost six weeks without a pay-per-view. If it was live, it would I feel like it would be structured a little bit better because they could have pushed under siege until the middle of May, but they didn't have enough tapings to do around the rebellion weekend Uh, and i and i think that's the problem because you have rebellion saturday night they're not going to put four they're not going to tape four tv shows in one night sunday that's a big hangover for the wrestling you know the tna wrestling fans that are attending so they can only tape two shows the night after i think that i think that's the problem there with them not being live fair enough fair enough i would just move i'd move these secondary shows into like two weeks of TNA like, like or do it like on the Thursday not the Friday like so like have they do with NXT yeah yeah there this is very much their quake of the lake situation here I feel <laughs> uh, one of those of you, you could have just not done it and then said you did it you did it done did it but that, but, is, that oh. being said it will probably surprise us there's probably gonna oh, be yeah right we, we'll see <laughs> rapid fire through this. So, I'm gonna name off the match. One word answer: FBI, uh, Guido, Clayton, and Ray Jazz versus TBD. Six man tag match. TBD always TBD. wins. AJ TBD. <laughs> TBD. Yeah. Fuck you both. Then I'm going with the Paisans. Yeah, sorry, Paisans. Go make a pizza. Yeah. Jordan Grace and PCO versus Steph D. Laner and Khan in a mixed tag team match, justifying that abomination that was a women's match at Rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to vote against Jordan Grace because I really think Steph D. Lander and Khan are going to pull it out, but I'm, I'm going to go Jordan Grace and PCO because they're my favorite. So there it is. Mm-hmm. Whew, I kind of have to go with you. Um... No, I'll go con. I'll go con and uh, D Lander set up uh, another D D Lander title shot. Yeah, screw it, damn you! I was gonna go D Lander. I will D Lander. D Lander uh, is Spitfire of Danny Luna and Jody Threat defending the Knockouts World Tag Team Championships versus Alicia Edwards and Masha Slamovich. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm afraid they're gonna do it. So no. I'm going to go with it. Alicia Edwards and, and Masha Slamovich, new TNA Knockouts Tag Team Champions. I, listen, I think they're going to do it. I, I honestly, because I, I don't like it. I, I feel so uncomfortable with it. But I think that's what's going to happen. Alicia Edwards is Chris Jericho of TNA. 
and I'm oh, gonna, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm gonna take Spitfire to win this match 110 percent. I okay. love Masha. I, I have been the fucking one campaigning for her when she was out there, top 15 in all of PWI and all of that, you know, above every other woman. But Spitfire needs to win this match. To hell with Alicia Edwards as a champion in TNA. <laughs> uh, Australian Kim Kardashian. <laughs> now. Uh, I mean, if the shoe fits, you might as well wear it. Yeah. Um, Hammerstone versus Jake something. Uh, easily could be match of the night. I, I feel that both of them are somewhat on a losing kind of streak here. I don't know who needs this victory more. Maybe Hammerstone. Um, I'm gonna take Hammerstone. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, Hammerstone. I, it's too hard to bet against them. Something kind of needs it too, though. Right. They both need it. They really do. Need a little something. <laughs> yeah, but Hammerstone needs this. As I like this. Team Malisha. No, 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 no. Malisha. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I like that. <laughs> I'm going to no, use that on Twitter. Just, I'm no. use that on Twitter. Team you Malisha have to. Tonight. Um, and then so Broken Matt Hardy. Yes. Um, and Speedball Mountain. Um, versus the system of Moose, Brian Myers, and Eddie Edwards in a six-man tag match. By the way, Speedball Mountain as a tag team name is quite interesting choice. They, why? They should be called Tony Khan? <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they could they, they'll just be called the AW Locker Room, Speedball Mountain. Yeah. That that's how you become you like at AEW. You got to get up Speedball Mountain to be the champion. Yeah, I was gonna say, well, you got to ride Space Mountain with Ric Flair, and then Tony's gonna get to on the speedballs and everything. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> All allegedly, folks. Um, allegedly, allegedly. A lot of controversy surrounding this match uh, out of nowhere. Um, but <laughs> if I was, if Nick Nimitz was wrestling in this match like he was supposed to. I mm. would have went with Nick Nimith and Speedball Mountain, but I'm going to take um, the system in this one. Yeah. Uh, again, I hate to agree with you again, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, especially with the things that are happening, I think uh, the system's been a force. They, they're kind of running TNA right now. I like it. So yeah, give them the win. No, I will delete you. That we're going broken, Matt Hardy, with all of this, and, and it's still funny to me. If he's very much like the second he showed up, he's like, "By the way, just in case anyone's asking, I haven't signed a contract with them. <laughs> I'm still open for business here." Right? Yeah. No, I think Matt Hardy wins this one. They just had him show up. You can at least have him get a win in a six man tag match. Maybe you set up a Moose versus Matt Hardy. Match for the uh, title. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I'm like, yeah, it's provocative. No one knows what it means, but it gets the people mm. going. Right. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. And Matt Hardy so, versus PCO. Oh, oh, Matt Hardy's still just clinging on to everything with uh, the Wyatt family and everything with that. <laughs> Anytime they put out a fucking glitch or anything, he makes sure to retweet that shit. <laughs> See, I can do the spooky shit too. <laughs> And then, so, last match, potentially main event for Under Siege, Josh Alexander and EY Eric Young versus Steve Macklin and Frankie Kazarian. I, I don't know how to feel about this match. Random, somewhat random. <laughs> random is here. how you feel. Um, but at this point, I've bet against Josh Alexander too many times, and he's won. So Josh Alexander and Frankie Kazarian. Not Frankie Kazarian, but I'm um, Eric Young. No. Frankie. <laughs> Just Frankie. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want to see Kazarian win at all. So, yeah, no, they're losing. See, uh, Josh Alexander and Steve Macklin should be a fucking team or a feud or whatever. Like, that's that's the they thing. Been, yeah. yeah, that's what I kind of want out of this. And, I mean, if Hammerstone's going to win earlier on in the night, or depending on where this card lays out, this could be before even Hammerstone has a match. 
Josh Alexander needs to win. He's taken recent Ellis to Hammerstone. You've still got to keep him going. But I hate that Macklin's taken out. Like, that's the thing is if I had Josh Alexander and Macklin versus EY and Kazarin, this is a whole different game here we're playing. Right. I agree, but they're losing. Sorry. <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I, I feel bad for picking on Frankie, but yeah, I know. Take the L. Bro, he, he was the elite killer or the elite hunter in uh, all elite wrestling and couldn't find one elite. Like, what the fuck are you doing out there, my guy? <laughs> That's like running through an apple orchard and saying, I can't want, find one apple. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm just telling you, Jesus, I feel bad for the person riding Ric Flair. <laughs> Jesus. Back to you, Nick. Uh, you, you know, make me follow that up with, you know, the longest, you know, make me the oldest ride, but it's still got the longest line. <laughs> <laughs> and it's broke down half the time. But no, that is all the matches for Under Siege here. Do we want to talk about... Um, the NFL, or Christ, the NFL, the WWE draft. Is there anything we want to touch on before we tiptoe by the window on out of here? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I wonder if the chat has anything real that we might have missed out of talking about. Um, overall, uh, again, I mean, there's some level of excitement from us for, I mean, Under Siege, TNA usually does pretty good for their pay-per-views. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But they in a pay-per-view. Well, it's a semi pay per view. I don't know. What yeah, and and I think I, I should because I've seen, I've seen people in the comments like I don't like this side of Anthony. So let me clarify. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bring it out! Bring it out! Let's go! Let's go! Bring it out! Let's go! I, I, I think Under Siege is going to be great. I have not watched uh, a TNA pay per view in the past year and a half. Actually, I can include 2022 because I've watched all of them as well. That has been bad. I don't think this is going to be a bad pay-per-view or a monthly special. I think it's going to be great. I just somewhat am over the two-week monthly specials. Like, we just got over Rebellion. That's that's the only thing. Um, and I don't think, like, we had enough time to build, like, matches with, like, the last one with Eric Young and, and um, Alexander. Things of that sort. I think those kinks can potentially be worked out next year. Um, if they do go live, but I think that's that's the only problem I'm having with TNA. It's going to be a great show tomorrow, and I'm going to be watching it regardless. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think it'll be all right. We'll see. We'll be here live for it, so it should be a fun one. Um, Wrestling for Life Network 